A lot of what cosmologists have thought to be true for 100 years is being turned upside down by James Webb. We have made mistakes in science, as shown by a new ultra-deep picture. It was thought that the telescope would show us the first stars in the sky, but it's killing the old way of thinking and might lead to a whole new field of science. The new facts aren't making all experts crazy with fear. A lot of scientists are glad about the changes because it was clear for a long time that our old ideas were wrong. The differences in how the growth rate of the universe was measured should have woken researchers up years ago, but they didn't listen to the warnings and stuck to old ideas. Light from the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, is thought to be the oldest light in the world. The CMB was made about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when the universe was cool enough for electrons and protons to join together to make stable hydrogen atoms. This process is known to scientists as reionization, and it opened up the world to light. The American scientists Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were the first to find the CMB in 1964. The two experts were working on a new kind of antenna technology when they heard noise coming from all over the sky. For a long time, this find was seen as one of the best proofs of the Big Bang Theory. The names Penzias and Wilson will always be linked to the Nobel Prize in Physics. The CMB probably shows a picture of how the world looked when it was young. A lot of information about what the world was like right after the Big Bang can be found in tiny changes in temperature. Scientists used the CMB to get a good idea of the basic parameters of the material universe. For example, they use it to find out how fast the universe is expanding. This math had been done before by scientist Edwin Hubble in the late 1920s. Hubble found that galaxies far away are moving away from us in all directions, and the faster they are moving, the farther away they are. These facts are now called the Hubble Rule or the Hubble Constant. Of course, Hubble didn't have the same accurate measuring tools that were used decades later when the CMB was found. Scientists adjusted the rate and found that it was much lower than what Hubble had found. Later, scientists used type I supernova as standard candles to figure out the rate again. Astronomers could use light that was so stable that it could be used as a kind of accurate measuring stick. Using standard lights, the distance is found by comparing how bright they appeared to be to how bright they really are. When measuring the CMB, the rate of expansion was about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. When measuring with supernova, the rate of expansion was about 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. What does S8 really say? Did you know that this difference has been used to figure out the speed at which the world is expanding since the 1990s? People who study the CMB have known, or rather thought, that something might be wrong with the assessment since then. The ways of measuring things, or the idea that the world is expanding. The difference in the measured rates of growth of the universe is called the S8 tension or Hubble tension in the scientific world. It's not just a change in measurements that this tension means. We can see from the different results that important parts of what we think we know about the world are wrong. They didn't know what to do for a long time. Scientists have been surprised by the James Webb Space Telescope since it started working. These surprises may now help them figure out how fast the universe is expanding. Old science is being completely turned on its head by galaxies that are so old and fully formed that they must have formed before the Big Bang. In astrophysics, gaps or changes in measurement are no longer talked about. Scientists are chatting about the most important problem in modern science. The rate at which the universe is expanding might be wrong, and the idea of growth or the Big Bang itself is being tested. Webb's pictures show us a world that is very different from what we thought for a long time. The tension in S8 was the first sign and now all researchers who still accept the old theories are in trouble. Do we not know anything about the universe? A lot of experts are living on the wreckage of their life's work these days. They look into space in horror and no longer understand what they are seeing. In view of the crisis in science, we have to ask ourselves, what do we really know about the universe? To answer this question, we need to understand how science works. Theoretical scientists use a complex web of mathematical models 
empirical data and deductive reasoning to draw conclusions from the general to the specific. Their quote-unquote knowledge comes from a combination of observed phenomena, experimental results, and many theoretical analyses. The word theory alone shows us that these are constructs and ideas, but not truths. The only practical knowledge we have are the images that telescopes provide us with the sounds, waves, and radiation that we can capture with radio telescopes and the latest data that neutrino measuring systems or gravitational wave detectors bring us. With the James Webb Space Telescope, we now have an instrument at our disposal with which we can, for the first time, break down the oldest light into individual frequencies and analyze it in a way that has never been possible before. Webb can show us which elements were predominant in galaxies over 13 billion years ago, how much mass was contained, and how many stars this indicates, and the telescope can reconstruct the shape and direction of movement of a galaxy. But Webb can also have weaknesses in some images. For example, the telescope cannot determine with certainty whether we are really seeing galaxies or black holes that shine just as brightly as a galaxy due to huge accretion disks. We have to face the fact that our science has long developed in a way that has accepted too many eventualities as truths and has long disregarded alternative explanations. Research has long been certain that it is right. The latest findings from the James Webb Telescope are important clues to replace theories with new truths as has happened dozens of times in science. Scientists are currently waiting. The new discoveries are too crazy, and it seems impossible for many researchers to come up with new explanations right now. The new findings are shaking the foundations of our physics, and that scares many researchers. The teachings of physics today are still largely based on Isaac Newton's teachings, who conducted research in the 17th century. For centuries, his laws of motion and gravity were the foundation of physical understanding of the real world, including the universe. Newton's laws explain the movements of objects under everyday conditions and work quite well on Earth. In space, however, his ideas had to be extended, and this was largely done by Albert Einstein, at the beginning of the 20th century. His special theory of relativity was published in 1905 and revolutionized the understanding of space and time. Einstein proved that space and time are relative to each other and depend on the movement of the observer. The general theory of relativity followed in 1915 and extended the concept with mathematical proofs of gravitational phenomena based on the curvature of space-time by masses such as stars or galaxies. Einstein's laws and ideas were coherent in many areas, but he also reached his limits. The researcher knew during his lifetime that his theories would never be sufficient to describe the universe as a whole. He dreamed of finding the world formula, but he did not succeed. Incidentally, no other researcher has succeeded to this day. Where is the mistake? Wouldn't it be interesting to know where the mistake lies? Miki Okaku, the popular astroscientist from the USA, said in an interview that the person who solves this problem is sure to win a Nobel Prize. Let's see what facts scientists may have overlooked. Where have they possibly misinterpreted phenomena? Or are our telescopes to blame? At the top of the list of suspects for the real causes of the cosmological crisis are dark matter and dark energy. Our current models of the universe include concepts that dark matter and dark energy together make up about 95% of the universe. However, neither has ever been directly observed, and consequently their real existence has never been proven. Either they do not exist at all, and we have to explain the expansion of the universe and the dynamics in galaxies differently. Or perhaps both have properties that we do not yet know of. One idea currently under discussion is that the physical properties of the two dark components have changed over time, which could even mean that we are dealing with some kind of intelligence. The next thing to be put to the test is gravity. This force, which supposedly leads to attraction through mass or curvature in space-time through mass, has not yet been proven. The ideas of space-time curvature originate largely from Einstein and have been proven true many times over. However, we cannot currently rule out the possibility that gravity has completely different properties than we thought, or that it's a different effect that causes the gravitational pull on and between objects. 
Over the decades, a number of values have been established in our cosmology and astrophysics as so-called cosmic constants. These are values that are largely reliable because they hardly change. Calculations have shown that small variations of these alleged constants bring new momentum into the universe, and that we could explain a number of phenomena without the existence of dark energy. It is also possible that our interpretations of the redshift of light are wrong, and that for decades we have measured incorrect distances within the cosmos and also incorrectly determined the age of galaxies. Perhaps our assumptions about the initial conditions of the universe were also incorrect. We may have misinterpreted the cosmic microwave background radiation, and it's also possible that the universe cannot be traced back to a single starting point. This would mean that the idea of the Big Bang is wrong. Although we are technologically advanced, we cannot rule out minor errors in the Webb telescope or other observational instruments. Engineers and scientists admitted in the face of the crisis that errors in instrumentation, data processing, or interpretation are always possible. Subscribe now and never miss an exciting new video.